There's one person who's been running for president, and he's doing it with his own unique way. He's running as a Republican, Dr. Roland Roberts. He joins us now on America's Hope. Uh, Dr. Roberts, it's good of you to join us again. Great to be with you, Kelly. We talked uh, some time ago, I think it was June of this year, when you were discussing about running on uh, a purpose of saying America needs God. Mm. Has that changed at all? Not a single bit. In fact, if you look at world events, if anything, I think it's becoming more clear to the American people that the where America is right now is beyond the help of politicians. It's beyond your policy. It's beyond the next think tank. Uh, what America needs is God more than ever. We need his blessing. And, and, and so in running on that campaign, what have you been able to say to America uh, on your campaign trails? Well, that uh, the family is the greatest threat and also the greatest blessing uh, and our greatest strength to America. And so I'm running on national security, family, and economy. When you look at the landscape of the candidates within the Republican Party, where do you see yourself standing uh, in difference to them and then even having some common ground with them? Certainly. Well, first of all, there is no number two right now. I mean, you either have Trump and then you have everybody else. Okay. Uh, so there is no second place. Uh, I believe I'm running outside of that pack. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I didn't participate in the debates, uh, because I felt like that was uh, irrelevant. It's not the way to run this time in history for where America is at. We need to do things different. We have to do things better. We're talking about Gen Z. No one living has seen how Gen Z will affect a popular vote and uh, and for president of the United States. So to run the way things have always been, not to mention a World War III looming over our heads and China and South China Sea and Iran and Israel and everything else, uh, that alone changes the dynamic. But that's where I'm different. I'm not running uh, the normal campaign because these aren't normal times. Uh, people need statesmen, not CEOs that know how to uh, appease the, the governing bodies of either the Republicans or the, or the Democrats. Let's unpack that. You said a lot of things there. Generation Z, uh, you see throughout America, people are protesting against uh, Israel on uh, college campuses. We see a rise in anti-Semitism. We see a rise in anti-Asian. We see more division. W what's happening there and how would you address that? Well, it's a lot of uh, indoctrination over the past couple decades while most Americans were sleeping. The problem is we've been had it so comfortable, we've had it so easy, we've been focused on our retirement. And now I know politicians tell us how bad we have it and if we don't vote for them, then you know we're gonna lose our democracy. But the truth of the matter, and that uh, has been the rhetoric from the last 20 years, but people still went to work the next day, they still went out to eat, they still took their annual vacation, and they didn't notice that. Yes, they may have taken a second job and things got tighter, but the issues today are so much greater and we will have a profound lifestyle change in America if something doesn't change. The open border, all of the people coming in, what we're seeing around the world is child's play compared to what will happen in the United States if we don't get, not even if we get the border under control now, we also have to go back to what's already been done and fix who's already here. So are you talking about the, the gotaways, the people who are coming in with a with a known terrorist behavior and perhaps trying to set up terror attacks on the United States, which we're now hearing uh, the director of the FBI saying, they're, they're, we have a problem. Other governments have infiltrated us. We always, spycraft has been around you know, for centuries. What's different about this is that it wasn't just spycraft, it was a full on invasion and an infiltration. And the, the interesting thing is, they're, sometimes they're our neighbor. They're sitting next to us in coffee shops. As we saw from 9-11, they're at our flight schools. Uh, and then they go study at the coffee shop uh, for their flight test. And you would never know. They're already here. But the problem is you can't let that affect your prejudice to other people. We're still Americans in the United States of America. It is our, the leader, uh, our leader's responsibility uh, to be a, held accountable for this. And that's why my plan for immigration, both for illegal immigration and for the people who are already here, is uh, absolutely the best we've ever seen from either party. If you were president today, what would you do about Israel and Ukraine? Well, first of all, I'm working, uh, have, I'm one of the editors of Ukraine's new constitution. Talk uh, to me about that real quickly. Sure. So they're moving from obviously a USSR old Soviet model, which their current constitution was actually written in Moscow in 1994. That would be like the British writing our constitution in 1776. It's a little bit skewed. Okay. 
And so we want to help promote a free society in Ukraine. A free Nation is doing a great job over there laying the groundwork. They're getting the support of the Ukrainian citizens and of the uh, government officials. I was just with the European Union, six ministers, uh, uh, ex-ministers from the uh, Eastern Bloc nations uh, in, uh, in Ukraine last week for this discussing the way forward. They want to have a free country, but freedom is messy. And they're learning that it requires a lot of conversation, such as children going to school. Well, if they want to give their, if you want ultimate freedom, the parents get to decide if their children are educated or not educated. Here in the United States, we decided to relinquish that freedom. Uh, and the state does mandate attendance, uh, school attendance for children. And, and, and now Israel, the topic of that. Israel uh, has to defend itself. Israel, you know, one of the biggest misconceptions I've seen about this whole thing, I knew when I did the interview on October 20th, three weeks prior to these attacks happening on November 7th, they were asking me about Iran as it relates to the United States and them being one of our greatest threats. I said, they're not our greatest threat. They, 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 they're, they're the greatest, they're Israel's greatest threat. And, uh, and that's where we need to be watching because anything that happens to Israel, we're going to be drawn into that. Uh, and so I can tell you that uh, all the countries within 24 hours lined up on one side of the other, whether you were Israel or Palestine, Palestine is not even a nation. So to even talk about them in that way shows the ignorance of the American public and really the world at large. Uh, also, the other misconception I'm hearing is that they keep saying, well, the Israelites stole the land in 1948 whenever they took it. And they, ironically, uh, they don't understand the, uh, the, 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 this was promised to, to Abraham and to Isaac, and these are the children of Isaac and the children of Ishmael. They didn't take anybody's land. It was given to them, you know, mil, two couple millenniums ago. Going back to antiquity. So, Dr. Roberts, you've been running. Uh, are you getting traction? Do people know who you are? And uh, take this opportunity now to tell people who you are, who is... Rowan well, Roberts. I can tell you, we like where the campaign is at. Uh, obviously, Vice President Pence is out, Larry Elder's out, uh, Perry Johnson's out. A lot of people have dropped out already, the candidates, um, and, and we're just getting started. We've been running every day for, 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 for months, uh, since the beginning of the year, January 20th. But uh, at this point, we just uh, you know, have a staff we hired last week. We have political cons consulting firms that are coming on. We have a super PAC that just got behind us. That's going to revolutionize our campaign and the landscape of it. Really, where the campaign is at is about getting our message out, that America needs God. We have all the policies. It's on our website, RolandRoberts.com. We go over education and immigration and health care and concerns on the economy and the national debt, how to not balance the deficit, but to eliminate the national debt. What we're going to do on energy and nuclear energy and clean energy, uh, what we're going to do on AI, artificial intelligence and jobs of the future, that is where we are. And uh, but I, we can win on family, national security and economy. But who are you? Who I am? I'm a, I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost. I'm a husband and a father. We, uh, In fact, today is my son's four-month uh, birthday. Congratulations. Four months old. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's who I am. I mean, I, I uh, the Lord is uh, is everything uh, to me, and I build my life around uh, around what pleases Him and, and and following the best I can. I believe God called me to run for president. This was not an aspiration. This was not something that I aspired to. This was God calling me to run for president of the United States at this time for such a time as this. What He does with it, it's whatever gives Him the most glory, and we're fine with that. So you're running on a call from God. And so my, my final question is, what's your hope for America? My hope is that people turn back to him and acknowledge him once again. He said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We, if we don't acknowledge him, we are doomed. If we acknowledge him, then so many of the problems in America that we experience, we would not experience. We're trying to solve them the wrong way. Uh, and we just have to acknowledge him once again. Dr. Roland Roberts, thank you for being on America's Hope. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank God you, bless Kelly. you. Thank you.